This is Stu Miniman with Wikibon.org, SiliconANGLE TV's live continuing coverage of the Open Networking Summit here in the heart of Silicon Valley, talking about network transformation and uh, excited to really talk about a startup here. So joining me for this segment is Emilio Billy, uh, who is the founder uh, chairman of uh, A3Cube, which came out of stealth uh, just a week ago. So Emilio, uh, thank you for joining us on this segment. Thank you to you, thank you for the introduction. Great. Uh, so, can can you tell us a little bit? You know, what, what is A3Cube, um, and you know, you know, how do you fit into the you know networking ecosystem? Okay, A3Cube is a startup. It's a company that is born uh, in May 2012, so it's very very new. But it's the result of more than five years of my personal work with my team and so on in a stealth mode. And uh, what is done? Uh, FQCube de develop uh, a new share address space oriented uh, interconnection that aim to extend the PC Express capability from the inside the box uh, outside the data center. So to create a, a real PC Express uh, capable fabric. And uh, why? Why we do that? Because uh, as you know, there are a lot of interconnections that are very good. There are uh, Ethernet everywhere, especially in the data center, there are InfiniBand. Why PC Express? So the idea came to me and I invested everything in this idea because at a certain point of my life I would like to build a parallel scale-out storage architecture. There where the, where the time people start to talk about uh, SSD, so I would like to use SSD to extol the maximum power as possible. And I realize also that uh, the new emerging uh, analytic software like Hadoop uh, use a parallel file system to aggregate uh, these uh, uh, distributed disk uh, among the nodes. There, there was one thing that uh, immediately I realized. When you use uh, HDFS, for example, HDFS will use uh, TCP IP socket for the communication. So solid state hard drive are really good because they lower the latency to access to the disk especially locally. What's happen when you connect multiple of these boxes with XSD inside in a parallel way? The network became the bottom because the latency of the TCP IP socket over the network is becoming higher than the latency of the disk itself. So there was something that was not good. Yeah, Emilio, if I, if I could just, you know, Jump in there. So, I mean, we've been talking to a lot of people here and talking about, you know, open networking and all yes. of the open source projects and everything. I, I think that the general assumption is everything goes on Ethernet. And I mean, you, you yes. know, the old saying is it's Ethernet or Ether not. So, you know, there, there's what was the what was the core deficiency that Ethernet couldn't solve, and therefore, that, you know, why you need to look at this alternative. That was the key of our development because we realized that everything is driven by at least the TCP IP. That is the key of the Ethernet. But the TCP, as we know, is too high latency. So Ethernet is a standard, so we need to think about the standard. But this standard is too high latency. So the idea was, okay, don't think anymore to Ethernet, change the transport media, change the way how to communicate between the server, but don't change the TCP IP socket. And this was our answer to the Ethernet. So join uh, the old world of Ethernet that is 40 years old with a new approach that is coming from the PC Express, that is new bus, without changing the programming model, but extolling the power of the PC Express and the memory mapping in a completely different way. That was... Uh, so, you know, performance obviously is a, is a key driver here. You know, what, what kind of performance do you get compared to a you know, traditional okay. network? Let me explain just a little bit the mechanism so yeah. you understand why we achieve such kind of performance. PC Express is a memory mapped bus. 
uh, most of the people doesn't think about that. They think that uh, uh, memory mapping is coming from the past and stop. Really, we have inside our computer a memory mapped bus that communicate very efficiently inside the box. So the idea was take this mechanism and use outside the box in a way that to offload completely the operating system from the communication and use this new mechanism to put inside a virtual TCP IP that permit to communicate server to server without using the kernel of the operating system. So the result was, for example, the standard TCP IP use the kernel operating system, very high uh, overhead. And you, for example, for 64 bytes, you can uh, have, uh, in the best case, 20 microseconds. With our approach, same benchmark, standard benchmark, you can achieve 2.5 microseconds. So, more or less 10 times less latency without changing the programming model. Okay, so so make sure I, I, I understand this. So, you know, better, much better latency, much higher performance, um, do I have to change my application? This limited certain applications, uh, so it does change the application stack. You don't have to change. Oh the no, no, you don't. No, no, okay, you good. don't. You don't change. <laughs> At least if your application are written for TCP IP socket. Yeah, which just about every application yeah. is. So okay, that, no, that, that, that that's great. So it's you know it needs to be transparent to the upper layer uh, protocols there. So I, I guess you know one of the other things I think this has been tried before. Yes. You know, you know, it's, this is not the first time we've tried to extend the bus. There's been, you know, many times there. You know, there's a whole, I mean, just such a big ecosystem that's worked on yes. Ethernet Absolutely. and other protocols for so long. You know, how do you replicate things like security and reliability uh, that, okay. you know, we've done? There's another step. In, uh, in extending PC Express outside the box, uh, we realized that we need something that was really stronger than standard network. Also because uh, in memory operation are more critical than standard message passing. So the idea was to take the PC Express and adding some feature that coming from uh, avionics and military space, like, uh, uh, for example, end-to-end -end flow control, uh, traffic congestion management, uh, and flow control at link level. So we can manage it comp in a very, very uh, deeply way all the, the traffic inside the network from two points of view. The first is hardware level. So a, a layer in hardware provides the basic flow control of the network. After that, we can access with the software to all the register of the devices connected together because of the other space. And we can change in real time so we can act as a software defined network to change, for example, the route in case of congestion or in case of link failure. And this was to upgrade the reliability of the fabric of the PC Express to a level that can be considered a carrier grade fabric. Okay, C can you talk to us a little bit of how scalable is this environment, okay. you know, with the bus architecture, I have to think that there's some severe limitations on distance? Yes. You know. Okay, of course we are talking with a very high speed bus, so the copper uh, is a limit, and now we are working to the optical interface, so imagine that uh, you can reach uh, without losing signal uh, with the uh, uh, standard PCI Express uh, Gen 2 kind of uh, uh, CERDES uh, or Gen 3, we can reach up to 5 meters in cable, copper, and uh, maybe 100 in, uh, in, uh, in optical. So we adopt a, a new kind of topology that's coming from supercomputing to avoid the, limiting, the limited length of the cable. And this topology is the 3D torus. So each card contains itself a micro switch inside. So you can connect the server, the server together with short cables, just one with another, like in a Cray supercomputer. So really, to cabling one rack or two rack or three rack, we don't need a really longer cable. Uh, the maximum length of the cable is when we want to go from one rack to another one, and that's it. We don't need to reach uh, 100 meters of length of the cable. And this permits to us to scale with this topology. Also, we don't have the support for longer cable yet. And uh, so you can cabling uh, 10 rack of 40 nodes using uh, the maximum of 5 meter cable. Of course, by June we'll be ready also with optical and we assume that with optical we can scale up to 100 meter and so go ahead. The, the maximum scalability of the network is uh, driven by the address space uh, and we use a 16-bit address space 
So it means uh, 65,535 nodes. And this is the maximum scalability we can reach. Of course, this is a theoretical one, because uh, uh, you have to take in consideration many other stuff. But we can say that we can at least scale without any problem at least at 10,000 nodes or more. Okay, that, that's great scalability. Yeah. I, I guess the next question is, I mean, does this replace all of your networks or do I still need to have, you know, a, a, a different network for, for, for some of my other traffic? Okay, the, the idea behind this architecture was to create a very uh, analytics and uh, parallel storage architecture. So, to, the idea was to act as a data plane. So imagine to have, for example, you want to build an Hadoop cluster. Hadoop cluster requires that the storage and the CPU are merged together. And then you want to connect this, this node that contains disk, CPU, thousands of these nodes. Okay, you can do using your own data center network, or using Ronnie, you can create a connection between these nodes and create a very fast data plane between a node to aggregate the file system in real time to have uh, extremely low latency if you want to extol SSD performance and so on, but also for the communication between the CPU, like in a supercomputer, then you can use your data center network completely unmodified to access to this, uh, data do to this uh, that Hadoop cluster without changing your IP policy, without changing your firewall and so on. Because when you have two different networks like, in, for example, Ethernet and this the PC Express, also if the programming model is compliant, uh, uh, the plug are not compliant together, so how to match. The idea was to the separation between a very high speed network behind the scene and the standard data center for what they you have to communicate in terms of data access and reading and Great, so, so you mentioned Hadoop clusters a couple of yes. times, is that kind of the first use case for your yes. environment? Yes, was what we are focused because uh, uh, there are two main applications that we are really focused and it, where we can really extol the performance. The first one is an uh, analytic machine like Hadoop or Storm. And the second one is uh, a very high parallel NAS. So instead to put the analytics inside, you put uh, the computation outside, but you access uh, concurrently to a global file system like in Hadoop. So it's a very close application together. And uh, the reason, because we focus on that uh, and we use a supercomputer style network, is because uh, we are convinced that uh, in the next year, high-performance computing will become high-performance data. So our life will be driven by data. Yeah, so, so I mean, Wikibon CTO David Floyer's talked a lot about how you know the HPC model is yes. you know really you know <laughs> impacting lots of architectures, especially you know when you look at things like Hadoop. So uh, definitely see that proliferating some. You know, what, what's what's your you know ideal customer? You know, what, what what market segment are you hitting? We can talk about your use case. Is this kind of a large enterprise service provider? You know, where where where, where are you kind of looking okay. to hit, find your first customer? As a company, we would like to be vertical, so. We target OEM and system integrators that can provide our solution. Of course, inside there are some, near mic, uh, some market needs that are really, really uh, perfect for our application. Maybe oil and gas application, for example, Geno genomics, genomics, uh, proteinomics, and in certain way also uh, high performance computing in a traditional way, for example, fluid dynamics and so on. So. Yeah, it, it, and it's interesting because I've actually had some conversations here at this show that there's some, some of the uh, SDN solutions that are very much targeted. Oil and gas is a high one, you know, really low latency applications Absolutely. that we can change the model. Um, you know, how much of the, you know, how much of your team is, you know, focused on the software piece? How does software fit into, okay. you know, your overall solution? So our team is divided the half and half between the software development in terms also of design everything inside our card and so on, and uh, hardware development and software development. Uh, we are complementary, we are divided exactly in half, and the software development is really focused on uh, uh, create uh, a very robust in-memory library that permit uh, two, two, two things. The first one to support the, per, the, the existing application, and the second one to, to find a new way to use this network for more and more powerful application for the future. All right, so um, uh, Emilio, we're, we're getting the hook. Uh, really appreciate you coming out. You know, founder, chairman, and chief development officer of A3Cube. Uh, you know, very interesting technology startup. Definitely go check them out. 
Uh, thank you for finding time, and uh, we will be right back with our wrap-up of uh, Open Networking Summit 2014. Thank you.